Hello and welcome. I'm Ben. I'm a finance professor. And today we're going to talk about the board of directors. So if the CEO of a firm answers to anyone, it's the board of directors. So we're going to talk about the roles the board of directors play, what a typical board looks like, and how much board members make. First, regarding the roles. A big part of the board of directors job has to do with the CEO. So the board needs to hire the right CEO. That's the first thing they need to do. They need to incentivize the CEO in a way that's consistent with maximizing shareholder value. The CEO's job is to increase share price price, increase firm value, make the shareholders better off, the board needs to incentivize them to do that. A long time ago, there was something called pay for pulse. And it means that CEOs are going to get huge payouts so long as they stay in the job and stay alive and have a pulse. Around 2006, that changed. So after 2006, for a lot of CEOs, it's not sufficient enough to stay alive to get your big payouts. You also need to hit some performance metrics. You need to achieve some goals. The goals could be like you need stock return greater than your peers or you need return on assets greater than 12%. But you need to hit these goals as well as stay alive to get your big paycheck. So the board needs to hire the right CEO, incentivize the CEO, make sure the CEO isn't overstepping his bounds. There's something called empire building. So that would be where the CEO does something that makes himself better off but makes shareholders worse off. Such as paying $100 for some firm that's worth $50. So this would hurt firm value and hurt the shareholders but it would make him feel better because now his empire that he's in charge of is bigger. I'm bigger. My empire is bigger. So empire building is a real thing. The board needs to make sure the CEO is an empire building. The last thing the board needs to do as far as the CEO is concerned is to fire him when he's no longer the right guy for the job. So hire the CEO, incentivize the CEO, make sure the CEO isn't overstepping his bounds, and fire the CEO. Those are the board responsibilities as far as the CEO go. Other things the board needs to do. They need to nominate directors when old ones leave. They also need to be involved in the strategic direction of the firm. So where's the firm going in the future? And finally, the board needs to evaluate acquisition. So when a firm acquires another firm, about a quarter to a third of the time, it's bad for shareholders. They overpay. And the rest of the time, it's not usually good for shareholders. So acquisitions are good for the firm being acquired, but they're hardly ever good for the firm doing the acquiring. So some people are going to come tell the board, this acquisition is great. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be great for everyone. The board needs to evaluate acquisitions objectively, push back against them when they're not good for shareholders. So those are the roles of the board. Next, we'll talk about what does a typical board look like? A typical board in the U.S. has between 7 and 12 board members. Those board members will have served on the board from 5 to 12 years. The board will meet between 4 and 12 times per year. 26% of the board will be female. 26% of the board will be financial experts. And 17% of the board will be minorities. Those are board characteristics of U.S. boards in 2021. The Wall Street Journal says the average board member spends 5 hours a week doing board member things. Another question you might be wondering is, how much do board members earn? So I looked at the data. One of the largest determinants of CEO pay is firm size. So as firm size goes up, CEO pay goes up. It's the same with boards. So I looked at small firm board member pay, medium firm board member pay, and large firm board member pay in 2021. If you're a director at a small firm, you're going to earn on average $184,000. If you're a director at a medium firm, you're going to earn $223,000 on average. And if you're a director at a large firm, you're going to earn on average $282,000 a year for your eight meetings a year and your five hours a week. It's very good pay if you can get it. Most board members have lots and lots of experience and expertise. It's not an easy gig to get. I also looked at some special cases. Here on the screen, you'll see Apple board member pay. Apple is the largest firm in the U.S. The average board member at Apple makes between $350,000 and $400,000 a year. I also looked at the components of board member pay. What's the form of their pay? The average board member in the U.S. is paid with $108,000 of cash, $158,000 of stock, $10,000 of options, and $12,000 of perquisites. What the perquisite pay is, is the board member rarely lives in the same city as the firm, so they need to fly into the meetings, get them a hotel at the meetings, and then fly them back. So I expect the perquisite pay is the transportation costs and the, and the hotel costs 
for the board members to attend the meetings. All right, so that's a quick primer on the board of directors at US firms. Before I go, one last thing. I looked up the highest paid director in the US in 2021. He has a very common name. His name is Brad Smith. He works at a company called Intuit, and he earned $7.7 .7 million in 2021 for being a director. The firm said, Mr. Smith delivered outstanding performance in his role as executive chairman of the board. It must be true, that's a huge pay check for a director who meets four to 12 times a year. I'm a little bit jealous of Mr. Smith. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something about the board of directors. If so, please click below and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.